In part three, we added some uh, sample text and custom fonts to add some branding. Now let's do something simple by uh, adding a, a movie that we can play with in this application as well. So let's close out the application. And what I'll do is go ahead and add in some assets we have for video. So a single image and a movie file. And first what I'll do is let's create a new pick element here. Uh, we'll call it swimming. It'll point to swimming.xaml, and we'll use swimming.jpg. Well, we should create a new page called swimming.xaml, so we actually have something to navigate to. And uh, let's just start by putting our swimming JPEG in the page. We'll build and run again. Now you'll see that we have a new image down here, but oops. We ha we're navigating, but we're missing the image. It turns out I messed up slightly. In this files, what we want to point is to swimming. It's not in the images directory. Or actually, let's just go ahead and put it in the images directory. Drag that to images. And we'll change our source here on swimming.xaml to images. We'll build and run again. So now we've got our thumbnail here. And here's our, our image. And it's taking up the entire space the entire page. Uh, we'll fix that a couple ways. One, what I'm going to do is, since it's a lowered uh, resolution image, I'm going to set the stretch direction to down only, so we only uh, we don't size the image larger than its native resolution. Uh, let's create a, uh, a couple rows. The first one will uh, just take up the, uh, the entire space, and the second one will size the content. And in the second row, Let's add a stack panel. Let's orientation horizontal, and we'll horizontally align it to the center. And we'll add a couple buttons. The first will be play. The second, oops. The second will be pause. And the third, ah. The third will be stop. We'll go ahead and run this again. And now when we navigate to this, this page, you'll see we now have the buttons. And we're no longer taking quite all the all the space, although it's obviously very large. Uh, cool. Now let's uh, let's hook up the video so that we can play the video uh, when we hit the play button. So first, I'm going to set a name on this image, and we'll call it the video preview. And then we'll create another element called media element. We'll set the source on that media element to uh, the swimming.wmv file, which we have. Uh, we'll tell the video once it's loaded to let us control it manually. Finally, we'll, uh, we'll set a name on the element for video. But finally, we'll set the visibility to collapse. And what this does is hides the video uh, at first when it's not playing. Now, in order to play this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a click handler. Uh, what I've done is I've set the click property to play, the click event to play. So if we open now the CS file, we can see here if I create a um, a new method, so void play. So this method handler. Let's go ahead and just put a breakpoint here, and you can see that uh, now that I'm running the program, once I navigate to the page and hit the play button, we actually invoke the debugger, and this is something very powerful that I can actually debug the application even though it's running in the browser. So we, we'll just do something very simple here, where I, um, I'll take the video preview. I'll set its visibility first to visibility.collapsed. Uh, I'll take the video and make it visible by setting its visibility to visible. And then finally, I'll tell the video to play. Once again, go to the page. We hit play. And now we see I've messed up one last thing. And uh, let me just, the thing I forgot to do here, my fault, was tell this video to copy to the output directory. And what this does is lets us copy to it as if this were on the web, go ahead and reference it instead of embedding it as a resource. And when I hit play now, we see the video and we see the jump. And uh, that's it for part four. Thank you very much.